What's up, everybody? My name is Josh Biddick, and I am going to be your host for this episode of SideQuests. A little bit about myself. I am a host slash producer over at Borderline Entertainment, where we do a myriad of different content from reviews to reactions, and of course, lots of podcasts. Our Tedpole podcast is Game Chat, in which we sit down every week and have a video game variety show. We cover a little bit of news, have fun segments spread throughout the rest of the show, kind of giving you, as it says, a little bit of variety. Other than that, you may have seen me floating around Twitter sometimes over at Josh Biddick, sharing some thoughts occasionally when I have the mental fortitude to deal with social media. But that is not why I'm here today. I am here today to tell you about one of my favorite games, Dissidia Final Fantasy. Now, for those of you who may not know what Dissidia Final Fantasy is, there may be some good reason because it's a little bit out there for the Final Fantasy genre, right? It's a, it's an arena-style fighter where it takes the main protagonists from mo- all the Final Fantasy games and the main villains and they put them together in a fighting game. It's really fun, really unique, and for me as someone who's not a huge fighting game person but loves Final Fantasy, I fell in love with this game. This game came back out in 2009 on one of the best consoles, if I dare say so myself, the PlayStation Portable, the PSP, the king of handheld gaming at the time, maybe even now, I don't know, it's all up to you. I mean, I think the Vita is better and obviously you can have your your opinions on the Switch, uh, but you know, PlayStation and their portable consoles were crushing it in my opinion. So a little bit of history, for me with Final Fantasy, I love Final Fantasy. I love those games. Uh, for me, like Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts are my big my big go-tos when I think of like my favorite gaming franchises. And when the City of Final Fantasy came out, at that time I had only played 10, 10, 2, and 8 and 7, if I'm pretty sure. So I hadn't had a long history with Final Fantasy. Uh, you know, for, well, I guess Final Fantasy 10 came out in 2001, so I guess time-wise was long, but I hadn't played all of the games. And with Dissidia, you were able to go in and see all of these characters fully voiced, uh, rendered in 3D, had new models, it was HD, it was fantastic. It was really cool for me to get to learn about some of these characters and see them in a new light from where I might have seen their sprites or know of them from like the front covers of games, but to get to see them move and play in a much different way. The story of Dissidia, is very interesting. You basically have Cosmos and Chaos, two gods, right? One good, one evil, the whole spiel, the whole kit and caboodle. And they take their warriors to fight against each other for the conflict, right? And they're trying to find this resolution. It's very, very Final Fantasy. And you get to go through, and there's a story mode, obviously, there's multiplayer, there's all sorts of different things you can do. And there's like dungeons, the whole nine yards. And you just go through play as each fighter, learn a bit more about their story, and you know, obviously you're fighting their villain. All of the stages are classic Final Fantasy stages recreated from the ground up so you can see them as like a fighting arena. It is a blast. The combat is different, it's not just like, you're not really using combos, you're not button mashing. They had a really cool system where they had something called bravery. So as you would do bravery attacks, you would increase the amount of actual overall damage you could do. So bravery attacks, you'd slowly chip away, they'd be lighter, and then your goal was to break your other person's bravery, right? So say I had like a thousand bravery, someone else had like 40 at the time, I hit them for 40 damage, their bravery breaks, so they're a little staggered, and then as you're hitting, each damage you do, like each bravery attack you do to your opponent, then increases the bravery pool for that fight. And when you break an opponent's bravery, you get all those points, right? So you can get a max of obviously 9,999, and then you can perform an HP attack. And the HP attack is based off how much bravery points you have. And I know it sounds very convoluted. Of course, it is a Final Fantasy fighting game, so it has to be a little complicated. And the damage you would do is based off your bravery points, and that's how you would win the fight, right? So whoever got their HP down to zero based off the bravery, then you'd win. But if you do an HP attack, your bravery resets to zero. So if I hit someone for a thousand damage, my bravery resets to zero, but theirs is intact. So I may do a thousand damage, but then they could come around and break my uh, bravery, get all the, uh, the bravery pool, right? And then just kill me in one hit. So a little bit of strategy there. I found it really, really fun because it was really fast paced. You're moving around. And with it being an arena fighter, you could go anywhere in these maps. 
You could run up walls. You could have those really intense aerial combat fights that you're used to in anime or, or in the Final Fantasy cutscenes. For me, it was really cool because I love uh, Advent Children, Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, the movie, for those of you who are not familiar. And you could basically recreate some of those fights. You could, I would pit myself all the time against uh, B Cloud, fight Sephiroth, and I would try to recreate those moments. And it was just a ton of fun to be able to take these characters and kind of have them like action figures and play with them in an entirely new way. You could create the fights that you'd saw in your mind while you're playing some of these games. It was fantastic. Of course, there were also many different uh, cosmetics for the characters. So of course, as a big Advent Children fan, I was able to unlock Cloud's outfit from Advent Children, which also then changes up his sword from the Buster Sword to the Fusion Blade. That's really cool. Small details like that were something that I was a huge fan of. And with each character having an alternate costume, it meant there's so much replayability value. Uh, as a fan myself, I went through and I made sure like, hey, I'm gonna level up everyone and unlock all their abilities, all their weapons, all the stuff. And it was just so much fun to be able to play a Final Fantasy game in an entirely new light. Another big thing is with them all being fully voiced, like as a huge Kingdom Hearts fan, I was familiar with being able to see like Squall and Cloud and Sephiroth, hearing them, knowing what they sound like, knowing like their personalities, from Kingdom Hearts, but to be able to see like the warrior of light, the hero who started it all, moving around, talking, having his like leadership qualities go through was really cool. Or meeting characters like Zidane, who I had never really seen before. I knew he was from Final Fantasy IX, but other than that, I didn't know anything about him. So getting to learn like who he was, his personality was a really cool thing to experience in, in this new game and has made me want to go back and replay those games. Aside from that, like everything that you did in Final or the City of Final Fantasy One, like carried over into the sequel game, which was a ton of fun. And it's been said that the story in the City is actually kind of canon to all the Final Fantasy games, which is a little convoluted and really weird. But for me, it was cool to be able to actually continue the story of some of these characters. Final Fantasy X is one of my favorite games of all time, and I love it so much. So to be able to have more interactions with Titus and even his dad, and kind of go a little bit further with that story and to stretch it out a little bit more was something really, really cool to experience. Another one of the really fun components of this game was you would be able to build up like a super gauge, right? So it was your EX meter. And when you unleashed it, your character kind of went in like a Super Saiyan mode, but basically their weapon would turn into their ultimate weapon, whatever that was for them, right? And you would be able to do your super move, which was dope. So for Titus, who I played a ton of, you could do your HP attack and then go into a second damage dealing attack, which he would use his final overdrive blitz ace. And it was all flashy and you're flying around and there are lights and explosions. And it's just basically Final Fantasy like turned up to 11. It feels so much fun to do and play, especially when each character feels so different, right? You have Titus who is really fast and nimble and kind of using his gymnastic athletic ability to move faster and with kicks and hits and he uses his sword in different ways in ways you don't think he would because of how static he is in Final Fantasy X, versus Cloud, who moves a little bit slower but hits way harder, or Terra, who focuses primarily on magic-based attacks, or Bartz, who uses the weapons of the other fighters with all of his combos. So some of his attacks, like all of his attacks actually, are based on the attacks of other characters. So you could come up with really cool combinations as you're playing him. It was just really well thought out. I thought every character was really balanced. They offered something new. And you could get really good if you focused on one character, like any fighting game, right? Whoever your main is, you're gonna dominate with. So to be able to kind of play and have something new each time you go into the game, I thought was really special, let alone, like I said, everything carrying over to the next game. And being able to like have all your characters still leveled up, I thought was really special for a series because, hey, I spent all this time grinding, I've got everyone to level 100, and now I can replay all that and even get new moves that they've entered in for the second game. If you're out there with a PSP and you are able to get your hands on Decidia or uh, Decidia Duodecium, which is the sequel, it's a weird name, uh, I highly recommend it. Those games are fantastic. I have so much fun with them. There's something so special about being able to play a game with some of your favorite characters who you feel you know so well and see them in a whole new light. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, if you can't get either of those games or you don't have access to a PSP, there is the PlayStation 4 version of the game, which is Dissidia NT. I guess it's the City of Final Fantasy NT, which basically it was a game that took an arcade version that was like that was in Japan. There was an arcade machine that would play the game, where you basically it was like three v three. Took that, made it for the console. It 
it's good. It's not as great as the PSP version, I feel. Uh, obviously, it looks a little prettier. The roster of characters is immensely bigger, so there is that for it if you want to. But it is, you know, there's something about just a one-on-one -on -one fight with an iconic stage and then maybe either really intense battle music that you know every single like note to because you've listened to it a thousand times or what i would like to do is just the silence no music at all and just a fight between you and your opponent something about that i don't know for me it just it just clicked i had a blast with it and i cannot recommend it enough i hope you get to play it or i hope something i said here interested you enough to maybe check it out or check out some videos at least and be like hey man that josh guy knows what he's talking about his voice is very soothing and because of it I wanted to look up this new different Final Fantasy game that I hadn't heard of and hadn't played before. So I, I hope I took you on a journey. I hope you heard something you liked or enjoyed. And if you did, fantastic. If not, listen to one of the many other episodes of this wonderful show with the wonderful people telling you all about the games they love. Check out one of those because I'm sure you will find something you like. If you've liked me at all, please check out some more of my stuff over at BorderlineEntertainment.com. You can follow Borderline Entertainment on Twitter, or you could follow me at Josh Biddick to see what I'm up to, if anything I've said has tickled your fancy whatsoever. Other than that, thank you so much, have fun, stay safe, and of course, happy gaming. <laughs>